In this video, I'm going to go over some best practices for the infinite scroll project. I'm Paul Wilson, and I make YouTube videos about once a week on Adobe Captivate and other e-learning topics. If you like what you see here, please subscribe, like, and feel free to share these videos with all of your e-learning buddies. So one of the really cool features in the all new Adobe Captivate is that the paradigm of a slide has kind of gone away. You don't have to be fixated on X number of pixels wide by X number of pixels tall. If your content itself increases, whether it be the amount of items in a block or the amount of text within one of the components, it just pushes out and becomes a taller version of itself, much more like a web page. And I think it's a little bit more natural. It's also very similar to another authoring tool that's out there that gives you this ability, has had this ability for some time. So it's nice to see that Adobe is looking at the competition and seeing what users want. A couple of things though, and I, I wanna throw this out there, there are no hard and fast rules yet because this is so new for Adobe but I think there's some best practices that we can implement into our e-learning projects. First of all, one of the things that I looked at when I looked at a lot of this content was content width. There was no consistency here, and there was some that were 100% wide using up the full width of the block. Some was like 80%, some was 70%. And I think it's important to, you know, design this much like you would a living document, uh, a Word document or something like that, and include those types of left and right margins here. So if I select the different blocks themselves, and I wanted to, let's say we'll go 80% across the board here. So I'm going to set that to be 80%. We can then select the next content block. It's already 80%, so nothing to do there. I'll select this text here, or this text block here, and it's 70, so let's increase it to 80. Better match for the content below as well, because it looks like that's also set to 80%. These individual image grids here, they're set for 90, so let's squeeze those in a bit. And this text block here, also it's using 100%, so let's make that 80. Now, one exception might be an image block like this. This might be a really useful way to segment your content, and that's something that I've thought a lot about. 100% width for like an image block, I think is totally appropriate, but let's see what it would look like if we set it to be 80 as well. So if I turn that to 80, that still looks okay. And again, it forces the content width to have this nice natural margin on either side. But again, if you wanted to use this image to kind of suggest that this is the end of this section and we're about to start another section, using 100% width actually might be really useful in that case. Another way you can segment your content too is take advantage of the card component within many of the blocks that are within Adobe Captivate. If you wanna make sure it's really clear that this content is separate from the content before, turning on the card component I think really helps. And of course, then you could customize the card or even put like a background image behind the card if you wish. Now, bear with me for a moment. I have no data to support this being necessarily a great idea. But one of the things I was thinking about is what if we presented this infinite scroll project section by section? Could that help to also create a bit of a linear quality to this e-learning course? Also too, again, to deal with that whole segmenting of, of material here. So let's try something here and let's just take this content here. Uh, I'm selecting the entire block and I'm going to select hide during publish. I'm gonna do the same thing with this content block here and here and right down to the bottom of this particular slide here. Now, when you get a content block like this, it's sometimes hard to select the block itself instead of the content. So just use the double arrow 
to go up a level. And again, we'll hide this material here. So let's go back up to the top and let's just do a quick preview of this project and see what we see here. So in this case, we have sort of that first slide effect here. And what we could do at this point is select this content block and let's go into add interactive components and we'll select a button block there. So this is kind of nice. We can have a button here and we will have it say continue. Let's center that on the slide. And of course that will be visible. Now the action for this particular button, instead of going to next slide or doing a click to reveal or something like that, let's do this. Let's create an interaction here and we're going to show and we will select the next set of content blocks. So to do that, you move away from the objects target to content sections. So now we can just kind of hover over this to see that this will be the next section that we'll show. And I think that's enough for this case here. We'll click next and then done. Similarly, we can copy the entire block here. I'm just pressing control C on my keyboard. And just after this content block, we'll paste in another copy of that. Now this one will start off not visible in output. We'll go back up to our first continue block and we'll add new action, show content section, and we'll look for our first or our second button block here, which is this one here. So when we press this, we'll get this section plus the continue button here. Now let's duplicate this guy again here. Let's, uh, you can press control D to duplicate it here. And if I wanted to have it appear after the radio buttons, we can do that. So this continue button, we're going to edit this current action because that's left over from when we copied it. And we're going to change the target to be content section. Make sure you unselect anything you previously had here. And we'll just select the elements that we want to show, including the next continue button there. Okay. And then of course I would repeat that for the rest of the project. Let's take a look at this so far. Obviously I can do more to uh, refine this, but let's preview this and see how that works. So we have our initial content appear on the slide. Let's just move our play bar out of the way here. And now I can press continue and you notice the scroll bar shrunk down and we've got more content to reveal here. And I think this is an interesting way to present your content, allowing learners to scroll down and only use the continue once they're ready to move on. And again, it really helps with that segmentation. If you thought this video was helpful, please like and share it with your colleagues. If you need help with Adobe Captivate, hire Paul for one-on-one -on -one instruction. Paul's goal is to focus on lessons based on your specific needs. Visit his website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to his YouTube channel.